Ford Standard Corporate Protocol, SAEJ1850, indicates this is going to be a uh, OBD2 type of protocol. It's for scan tool and module to module communications. Now remember, when we tell you it's module to module communications, that indicates we can have data without hooking a scan tool up. The usage chart from the specifications says it's used up until 2002, where CAN becomes the standard and starts taking over. It is a two wire system, as a bus positive and a bus negative. And we're going to show you your test equipment hookup for that later on. More good news. It does stay on the same two pins all the way up till we get rid of it. So you don't have to worry about them moving around. There is not a bear in the woods on this particular one. It's a above and below center point zero being the decision point. The scan tool does not be, need to be disconnected. And you can see that they combine together to form a signal, a very high speed signal, 4.6 kilobot. Now, it's used for scan tool and module to module communications as we said before. We've got a lot of things in this diagram. Let's zoom in and look at it. Here is our bus. We've got it highlighted in red and green. The red bus is the minus. The green bus is the plus. Don't know what that means. When we hook our scan tool, our, our lab scope up, we hook in our red lead to pin 2 and the black lead to pin 10. Now, we do that as a convention because we're going to be looking at missing portions of this signal later on as part of our failure analysis. So if you hook it up the same way every time, our failure analysis works better and you don't get confused later on. So yeah, the red lead hooks into our green highlight, the black lead hooks into our, our red highlight. Brain fade, what can I say? These With this type of connection, we will get a normal pattern. The high end on the plus side is going to be 4.3 volts. The low is going to be minus 4. We're going to talk about dominant and successive later. But you don't always have constant communications like this. Let's go see what the real communication signal looks like in a live video clip with a lab scope. Remember, this is a special setup on our scope, so be sure to pay attention to that section. But look at the two different channels. They have the same information, just slightly different. We'll talk more about the scope setup as we get into the testing later. Now you have a good feel for how the signal comes in burst. Let's take a look and talk about some things like decision points. With a signal that goes above and below zero, the good news is the decision point is at zero. This gives us good noise immunity because the two wires working together. Now, where does it go when everything is quiet? We keep talking about this because you need to know when it's not talking what you're going to see. You're going to see plus 4.3 volts. This is called recessive, meaning the bus is idle and any module can talk. To get priority, the signal goes dominant, in this case minus 4 volts for several clock cycles. You see it right there. It's going dominant and it's stopping everything from talking. If you look back on the far left, we have a similar pattern. Every time a module wants to take control of the bus, it goes dominant, a couple clock cycles, alerting all others to be quiet. If this fails, we go to having communications problems. Now, we have some different little bursts of noise in here. Remember, the decision point is at zero volts. So, this little noise occurrence you see in here does not need to be diagnosed. It's fairly standard. Let's talk about the diagnosis. Now, we're going to get very specific. What we're trying to do in this program is give you very manufacturer-specific, protocol-specific diagnostics. But some of the things stay standard. If your scan tool supports module status or pinging, go do it. Go try to access each module and check for any U codes. If you can talk to the PCM, it can usually give you U codes if this module's not talking. Now, as we said before, our hookup is going to be done very specifically. The red lead goes to pin 2. The black lead goes to pin 10. This is the signal. Here is the important part. When we've hooked the leads up properly, 
If the signal doesn't go over zero volts, test the positive bus for an open or a module that's gone bad. Remember, there's two wires. A module can go bad on one of the wires and not affect the other wire, but it would affect the output signal. So let's say that one more time. If a signal doesn't go over zero volts, I'm going to tell you what else that means. That means you have no communications. Why? Because the decision point is zero. If we can't get above zero, we can't communicate. We can't find the recessive. We can't change it to dominant in order to communicate because we never see a recessive. Every module is setting saying, I never see the bus quiet. It never goes to minus 4.3 volts. So some of this stuff we tell you, you think might be insignificant trivia, this shows you how you use it for diagnostics. So if this doesn't go over, look for an open circuit. Look for a module with the plus going bad, stuck, or something. Now if the module doesn't, if the signal doesn't go below, we go test the negative bus. Same logic. Any open circuit, is going to give us the same problem. The decision point is zero. We are going to be unlikely to have any kind of communications at work. Go look for an open circuit in the negative bus or in a module where that driver has gone bad. Remember, we've got to say this twice. This is a two-part signal. You're going to see more of this. This is going to become more important as you look at CANs because CAN is going to have high and low and do similar type operation. So here we are. We've gone in here. Let's go back and see what we're looking at. If it doesn't go over zero, up to the 4.3, troubleshoot the red highlighted area. It can be a wiring so that we don't, after the, what we can have, any one module should be able to talk if we got an open circuit in one of these. If all of them have the same signal, the bus is shut down. But this is where we go look. If the signal doesn't go below zero, we test the negative bus where the red lead is. Here is our overall circuit, just so we can go back to it. We're going to check from signal SCP plus to ground. And we're going to walk through and see if we can get a signal. If you couldn't see the correct signal then, you're going to move down and disconnect each module one at a time see if it goes away. We're looking for a module that's going to shut down communications. Disconnect the PCM last, but remember, we can get a signal if it's a module that's causing the problem. Disconnecting each individual module will get us there. If the signal returns to normal when you disconnect a module, diagnose the disconnected module. Check for powers and grounds, change the module. Remember program any modules you change during diagnostics. Now, if it doesn't go back to normal, we got a slightly different problem. It's in a wiring problem. If it's still incorrect, check for wiring. Something has gone wrong. Yes, you're going to see cars opened up and things down at the bottom. So this is a very simple circuit to diagnose. We've gone in, we've shown you the two signals, We've looked at each half of the signal, and that gives us a part of the circuit to diagnose. If you have any questions about this, go back and look at it. Review it. That's why it's called interactive video. You can always use your space bar to stop the video play at any time to look at everything on the screen, hit the space bar again, and the video will continue. That's why we call it interactive video.